Hi guys, um, we will be looking at antibodies today. So, in terms of the learning objectives, you need to be able to describe the structure of an antibody, its function, describe the nature of monoclonal antibody, explain how monoclonal antibodies are produced, and explain how monoclonal antibodies are used to target specific substances and cells. So, in terms of the specification, where we are now, okay, we're looking at the um, at the antibodies. So, definition, structure, formation of the complex. Okay. So, what is the antibody? We've mentioned that in our previous video, it's a protein. Okay, it's a quaternary protein. Well, is the evidence for this? It's the fact that it's made of four polypeptide chains, as you can see. Uh, on the diagram here. So we've got two heavy chains. So those are uh, the heavy chains, okay, the long one, and we've got two light chains, which are our shorter chains. So what is the specific uh, thing about the antibodies? It's the fact that it's specific binding sites. So don't mix it up with the enzymes. They're not acting, uh, active sites, they are binding sites. So binding sites, okay, so we're looking here, right, those are our binding sites that fits every, uh, every uh, uh, specific antigen to make this antigen antibody complex, okay. What is then important about the antibody is the fact that those variable regions that making them the binding sites are specific, okay? So they are specific for every single antigen. So each antibody, they will have this uh, variable region. And where is the, in, in that fact about being specific coming from? It's the fact that they've got its unique 3D tertiary structure. So remember when uh, you are looking at the proteins, the uh, sequence of the amino acids will affect the, uh, the, the function and the structure of the protein, and this is where it's coming from. So that different amino acid sequence uh, that will be complementary to one specific antibody. Okay, And uh, all antibodies, they have the same constant region, so that doesn't change. The only unique uh, thing is the uh, uh, it's the variable region that makes this binding sites. So, what is then the function of the antibody? You must remember that they do not destroy antigens directly. They just lead to deconstruction, then prepare antigen for deconstruction. So, there are two ways of doing it. First way is uh, the fact that antibodies uh, cause agglutination. So what is the agglutination? So glue, okay, it's like joining those bacteria together. So as you can see on this picture here, they join them together. So they, uh, they're making those clumps of bacteria to make it easier for phagocytes to locate them uh, as they will be then less spread out within the body. Another thing, they could serve as markers. So they will then stimulate phagocytes to engulf the bacteria cells to which they are attached. Okay, so monoclonal antibodies then, what are they? So those are antibodies, uh, of course, with the specific 3D tertiary structure, complementary to binding sites on the uh, protein. Okay. Mono means one, okay? So uh, monoclonal antibodies, they will be the same. So there is a huge variation in the antigen, okay? Same like you're thinking about flu, flu, it's plenty types of flu, okay? Each of them will have different antigen. So on the surface of the bacterium or different uh, microorganism causing disease, we're going to have many different types of the antigen. And each of those antigens will then induce a different B cell to multiply and form a clone of itself, right? So each of those B cells will then produce a different antibody. And what is then a monoclonal antibody? It will be the monoclonal antibody uh, that is produced from a from the same, from the identical B cells, okay? So means if they are produced from identical B cells, they 
they must be identical. So hence, we call them monoclonal antibodies. So there are many uh, uses of the monoclonal antibodies. Of course, in medicine, we can produce them outside of the body, and uh, and there is a, a huge uh, number of the benefits provided by monoclonal antibodies. So how they are actually produced? So monoclonal antibodies, so they are the same, and of course, we want many of them. So we're going to use specific cells to produce them. So let's have a look. What we're going to use, okay? So imagine uh, we, we've used a, a mouse which was vaccinated, so was given a, a dead or um, a not really active form of the uh, antigen to produce uh, antibodies. So the plant cells then from the uh, antibody of the mouse will be collected okay so we can do this outside of the mouse and they will fuse with the tumor cells okay and we call it myeloma cells why would you fuse it with the tumor cells well because tumor cells okay what well, it's cancer cancer it's uncontrolled mitosis so we can really quickly produce clones of this of this myeloma cells so, uh, so uh, those uh, fused um, antibodies with the tumor cells, myeloma cells, will form hybridoma cells. What do we do then with these hybridoma cells? We then grow it in the lab. So if we keep growing them in the lab, we can produce many, many clones of this, uh, of this uh, antibody. So what will happen at the end of this process? The antibodies will be just collected okay so there we go the end of the story we've produced plenty antibodies monoclonal antibodies which we can then use in the uh, many different forms so here quick activity for you you can pause the screen now and try to uh, try to even uh, put those uh, letters in the correct order right ready now so what is the correct order first the mouse was exposed to a non-self material, okay, so to the antigen uh, against which an antibody will be produced and it's required. So once this is done, the B cell uh, in the mouse uh, produces a mixture of the antibodies which are then extracted from the splint cells of the mouse. The, uh, this will enable B cells to divide outside of the body. They are mixed with cells that divide uh, really quickly. So, for example, our cancer tumor cells. Okay, uh, what uh, we will then produce the hybridoma. Okay, these hybridoma cells will be separated under microscope, and each single cell will be cultured from a clone. So they will be tested, and then we will use them to produce required antibodies. So we're going to make many of them and they will be extracted from the growth medium. And because those antibodies coming from the same single identical B cell, we will call them monoclonal antibodies. Right, so that's your order. Okay, few questions to have a look at. NMO, uh, it's a disease that leads to damage of nerve cells. In the spinal cord and a person with NMO produces anti-AQP4 antibody that attacks only those nerve cells and explain why anti-AQP4 antibody only damages those cells. The word only here it's super specific because it actually brings around the word specific. So where is the word specific coming from? Of course, from the specific 3D structure of this antibody, which will be only complementary to the certain thing. So here you saw what approach. Sentence number one, the easiest sentence. The antibody has this specific dash structure with the binding site, which is complementary to one antigen, what we've mentioned. This antigen is found actually on those nerve cells that comes up from the stem of the questions. So they will bind to them, forming antigen antibody complex uh, to, with those nerve cells, okay, causing damage. Like easy. Another question we've got here: a new treatment for NMO.